Combining files with inconsistent headers is a frequent Excel task. The typical approach involves establishing a renaming table and utilizing it in Power Query to alter the column headers. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to consolidate files with inconsistent headers without the necessity of manually creating a mapping table. Let's have a look at the source data. I have a folder named Lists, and in this folder I have three Excel files. Each file had the name of one of the continents. Let's have a look at the contents of these files and look at the column headers. Here are the three files. The Europe.xlsx shows a capital, a nation, and residence columns. The next file for Asia shows a country, main city, and population, while the last one, which corresponds to Africa, shows a country, population, capital, and area in square kilometer. You might have noticed that the column headers are totally inconsistent. So what used to be named nation in one of the files corresponds to country in another file. Capital in one of the files correspond to main city. Residence and population are exactly the same. So we have the same data, but different column headers and different order of columns. We also have a different number of columns since the last file has an area column. My goal is to consolidate the data from the three files. And I'm going to do that by starting a new Excel workbook. In a new Excel file, I go to the data tab of the ribbon and to the left side of the data tab, I click on the down arrow for get data from file from folder. I navigate to the folder named list. I select it and hit open. Here are the contents of that folder. I see the three files, Africa, Asia, and Europe. And I want to combine these three files. I click on the down arrow for combine. And I select Combine and Transform because I need to do some transformation in these files. The Combined Files dialog box opens and first file is selected. If I click on the down arrow, I can see the three files, which means the first file, which is Africa, Power Query is going to use it for performing all the transformation. I can get a preview of that file by clicking on Sheet 1. And here are the different columns coming from that file, country, population, capital, area, square kilometer. I'm going to keep this file selected as a sample file upon which the transformations will occur. I hit OK and it opens the Power Query Editor. The Query Editor opens on top of Excel. A bunch of queries have been automatically created. This is the sample file that Power Query used for performing the transformation. If you look at the transform sample file, this is the data coming from that file, and here are the steps under Applied Steps. If I click on the output file, which is the combined data, I click on List, it inherits the name of the folder. I have a source column, and this source column shows the name of the file, and then I have country, population, capital, area. If I click on the down arrow for source, I will see that the three files have been used. Then I see records from Africa, Asia, and Europe. But I don't see the columns from these files. I just see the columns from the very first file. And now I start bringing the columns from the other files. If I delete the change type step, and I delete the expanded table step, then I'm back to this step prior to expansion. I have a transform file column, and I have tables for each row. So if I click on the first table, then I get a preview of that table. If I click in the blank to the right side of the second table, then I see the data and column from that table. If I click to the right side of the third table, I can see the column headers from that table and the data as well. What I want to do is to document this step because I'll come back to this step later on. And to do that, I select the step under Applied Steps. I hit F2 to rename it, and I'm going to call it Bookmark. And I hit Enter. 
Now we want to get a list of all the tables in the transform file column. And to do that, I select the column, I right click, and from the right click menu, I select drill down. Then I'm getting a list of tables. If I click on each table, that's the same preview we have seen before. If I click on the next table, I get the preview of that table and so on. I'm only interested in the column headers and I want to get a list of all the column headers. Here is a list right now. And to get a list of the column names, I'm going to wrap the step in the formula bar in a function that extracts the column names. I click before bookmark and I type list.transform. I open bracket, I click at the end, and the second argument, transform as function, the function that I'm going to use for each one of the tables will result in extracting the column names. Then I type each and then a space table dot column names. Note that Power Query functions are case sensitive. I open bracket and I type an underscore, which means each one of the tables. I click at the end and I close the bracket for the list dot transform. When I hit enter, I get a list which includes multiple lists. If I click on one of the lists, then I see the column headers from the first table. I click on the second list. I see the column headers of the second table. Then I see the column headers of the third table. I want to combine them all in one single list. I click right after the equal sign and I wrap the bunch of functions in a list.union function. List.union. I open bracket. I click at the end and I close the bracket. When I hit enter, I get a list of all the column names. I want to give a name to this step because I'll be using it in a later step. So I go to the applied steps and I select this step. I hit F2 and I name it all headers. And now I want to recall the bookmark step. Then I click on the FX icon. It refers to the previous step all headers. Then I replace all headers by typing bookmark. I can select it from the IntelliSense list, and when I hit enter, I get back to the bookmark step. Now it's time to expand the transform file column. I click on the double side pointing arrow, and I want to expand. I take the check away from use original column name as prefix, and then I hit OK. Then I bump into the same problem. I don't have all the column names. But let's have a look at the formula bar. I click on the down arrow to expand. I want to zoom in, Control shift plus to zoom in. And look at that. This is the function that has been applied table.expand. It has been applied to the previous step. And at the same time, here are the column headers in curly brackets. What if I select all these column headers in curly bracket, which means they are in a list format, and I replace this step with all headers? So if I type all headers and then I hit tab to select it, now if I hit enter, I get all the headers from all the tables. I can see all the headers, nations, and residents. The common scenario is to prepare up front a mapping table, a rename table that showed the name before and after. Whether you create this mapping table by typing and you build it and you load it to Power Query to use it for renaming these columns of the combined files, or if you compile it partially by compiling the original column names from the source file, send it back to Excel and continue the manual part for typing the rename column. Well, since the work is done manually, then I'm not going to create a mapping column at all. And I'm going to do that within Power Query. Let's collapse the formula bar. And now let's have a look at the columns country and nations store the same exact data, but they are coming from different files. So what if I select country and then I press control and click on nation, and then I go to the transform tab and click on merge columns. In the merge column dialog box, I want to give a name to the merge column and I'll name it countries. Where I hit OK, now I would have merged the two columns into one single column, countries. I also want to merge the capital and main city. I select main city, I press control and click on capital, and then I click on the transform tab, I click on merge column, and let's give it a name, capitals, and then I hit OK. 
now the two columns are combined together into one single column. I also want to combine population and residence. I select population, I press control and click on residence. I can right click and select the same option from the right click menu merge columns. And let's give it the name populations. And there I hit OK. Now I have capitals, I have countries, and I have populations, and I solve the problem of the inconsistent column headers. Now let's do some housekeeping. I want to rearrange the columns. I'll be dragging countries to the left, and I'll be dragging the area to the right. I want to extract the continent name, then I select the source name column, and on the transform tab, I click on the down arrow for extract, and I select text before delimiter. My delimiter is a period, then I type a period, and then I hit OK. Then I was able to extract the continent name. Let's rename this column continent. I hit F2, and I type continent. Now I want to select all the columns. I hit Control A, and on the transform tab, I click on detect data type. After fixing the data types, I want to rename my query. I'm going to rename it combined. And now I want to send it back to Excel. I click on the Home tab. I click on Close and Load. I want to load it in a new Excel worksheet. And now I combine the data from the three files. If you click on the down arrow for continent, you will see the three continents corresponding to the three source files, countries, capitals, population, and area in square kilometer. I didn't have to create a mapping table, whether by building it up front or by compiling it partially from within Power Query and load it back to Excel. Since we are doing that manually anyway, then I find that selecting the columns and merging them will be a lot easier. Of course, if we add another file with different column names, then I have to go back to Power Query and edit the step where I merge the columns. You can read my step-by-step -step blog article by clicking on the link in the description below the video. And if you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.